the reason why I'm using that is because Brother Nasio sent me a, a snapshot of something he read, and it made it all real condensed down for me. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't have to read all the chapters around it to explain it again, so this just explains it. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Sister Grant, would you lead us in prayer? Okay, as a review real quick, we are glad to have Brother Carlos Gonzalez here from Plant City, Tampa, the Tampa Bay area. <laughs> uh, he's down here visiting family and we're glad to have him and visiting us again. Um, we are studying the seven churches. We are on the last church, which we know, which is what? Bossy? Too much recording. Brother Richard? The Laodicea Church. They were guilty of what? Maritza? Uh, Sister Noreen? Christian? She was talking to me. She says, I'm talking to him, and he says, I was here. Oh. <laughs> okay, Sister Jeanette? Of being lukewarm. Okay, they were guilty of being lukewarm. Last week we went to Judges. Meros, we studied about them. Did anybody besides Brother Inacio study about who or what these people did to be cursed? Because we find that they did, when we started off the other day, we said the son of Meros in Judges 5.23, that they, we read the verse, go ahead and read it for me, somebody that has it there. Curse ye Meroz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabit inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Okay, did anybody find out who these people were and why they were cursed? This. Rhodes? It's pitiful. <laughs> Sister T? Uh, Brother T? Sister Valerie? Oh, no, 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 no. Morose. We started talking about them in the end. And I told you I was going to continue with it. Oh, the one who didn't come to battle. The one who did nothing. The one who didn't come to battle the people of Israel. Right. They didn't come to help. The, the Lord I, uh, was expecting their help, and they helped not. They did nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, but who are they? Who are they? Who are they? It's not just thrown in the scripture, and I thought maybe somebody's curiosity would be piqued, and they would want to go find out exactly who are we talking about, a people that's going to be cursed by God, which God help us if you're cursed by Him. That If they're cursed by Him, we know all about the Israelites, so why would we not be interested in finding out who these people really are so that we can understand why God uh, cursed them? Okay, how many of you remember the story of Deborah? Okay. I'm sure Brother Carlos remembers the story. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to read you what Brother... Brother, the brother sent me, so puts it all down in a little package for you. Um, he gives the verse, uh, because they helped the Lord against the mighty, rather among Israel's mighty ones. They gave asylum to the fleeing, fleeing Canaanites, accursed of God. Go back and read the previous scripture. Do you know where I'm going? Bible students. Whereas Jael, who slew their general, is blessed. Any more hints? Okay. Uh, rather, their sin was omission, faint-heartedness, neutrality. Uh, there can be no real neutrality. They neglected the duty of coming to Israel's help in the struggle against God's foe. 
if morose, and he gives different names for it, uh, on the south slopes of the hills, continuing the little Herman, they had commanded, they had command of the pass, and they could have prevented the escape of the Syrian host. Now, let's go back in our history, those of you that remember. How many of you remember the general that a woman had to do the work? The Syrian general, Sister Grant? Cesaras, what did she do? What did they do to him? She drove it in because he, he ran into her tent. So instead of the whole valley or these people doing and moving when they saw the advancing of the Syrian army, instead of them doing what they were supposed to do and come to the help of the Lord, that's what it says, the help of the Lord, a woman took the glory, which at that age was really off the wall. <laughs> because women had nothing to do with battles. Uh, women were not generals. Women were not partakers of warfare. But because, yes brother? I just want to say because Barack, not Obama, but Barack, um, <laughs> um, he basically, when, you know, when Deborah told him that he was supposed to be the one to go and fight against them, he said, well, I will only go if you go with me. Right. So there were two women here at play, Deborah and Jael. But it is sad that there was, he actually, I, I say it's sad because he actually felt like I need this woman. Not that it's bad, but I'm just saying the lack of, of manhood. I mean, it's, it's, like a, it's, it's like, where is the boldness and all that he needed, the courageousness that he needed to be able to defeat this this army and he just felt that he needed that woman with him. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying no, I understand that he needed the woman there because she was the, the, the judge in the provinces at that time. No, the judge, sorry. But, but the thing is here is that transporting it to practical, if we're in the place we're supposed to be as God's people and not lukewarm or whatever happens around me happens around me and God will take care of me and mine, because this is their attitude. They didn't want to get involved in helping the Lord because it was going to cost them. It, and they needed to make an effort. So then God sees their neutrality, their laziness, their slothfulness, their unconcern, and he curses them in one verse. And there is so many things in this verse. We started out last week. Okay. What was the, whose authority by what authority was this curse given? Because what I want to do is for us to see that in all this, it applies to you and it applies to me. What good is it for you to know that all the history if it, you can't apply it to yourself? This is where we learn. Many times we don't learn because we, we say, oh, well, that was them and I can do better. But do we? Do we? Why is everybody looking at me funny this morning or looking somewhere else? Sister Valerie, that baby has to go to the back seat. Okay. okay. By what authority was Morose cursed? Okay, by the angel of the Lord. Okay, why or what had they done? Just reading the verse now. All of you had the opportunity to read the verse a while ago. By what, what had they done to deserve a curse? What had they done? Thank you, brother. <laughs> they didn't do anything. Okay. Why is he then cursed? because he didn't do anything. What was the problem with the Laodicean church? Let's go back there. That they were neither hot nor cold or what? Was that what went wrong with them? Okay, no ring. They were lukewarm. And being lukewarm, what did God say? Okay, I, I, I don't know where I read this, but I don't know if it was just a thought that came to me, but I wrote this down last week. Some churches make God weep. We saw that in the other but the Laodiceans made him sick. I don't know which is, I think being sick is worse. Because when you feel like vomiting, have you ever felt like vomiting? Come on. 
Do I get a nod out of this? Yes, sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, it is the most horrible feeling when you have it there and you want to get it out and it doesn't come out. And then when it comes out, it feels like it's wrenching your very insides. We go back to the Old Testament real translation where it says, from the bowels, from the inside out. God was so sick of their condition that he was going to just get them out. He didn't want them anymore. And it was all because of, the, we called it the respectable sin, that's what we called it last week, that these people were in. This is the last church in the book of Revelation, meaning the last age. So what does this tell me? Carlos! <laughs> yep. That there's nothing else after that. Deeper. Deeper. He's talking about us. Our okay. Generation. There's there's nothing else that he said, but he's talking about us. The dispensation or the age in which we are living in. What does this tell me? Bells, 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 bells. They're ringing in your ears telling you you are in danger or that you're already that way and that we must beware of it. And we can't just take it lightly because one village, one little tiny group of people that did not do what they were supposed to do, God cursed them. And we're not finished with everything that was done. Okay, what should these people have done? Helped, come to the aid of the Lord. Okay, they should have helped. What are you supposed to do if God shakes you, like we talked about last week, and he reveals to you, wake up, you're getting into a lukewarm state. You're beginning to just sit there and do nothing. What do we do when God comes and does that to us? Brother Richard? I know maybe you haven't gotten to that state where you felt like it was just shaking very gradually. Right I don't know. I don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> All right. What do you do when God comes and asks your help? Or he's trying to shake you because you're in a lukewarm state. What do you do? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Brother Mia. We have to make it right. They don't hear you in the back. you got to make things right okay. with God. How do you do that? You have to repent of, of that lukewarmness. <laughs> you have to turn away from that. You have to stir yourself up in the Lord. Okay. When we fail the Lord, what is that called? <laughs> Sister Noreen? You do? Why? Yeah, <laughs> we did establish that. So I'm just kind of giving you like a review and everybody's looking at me like, okay. Yes, we have established that lukewarmness is sin because we're doing nothing. And this, uh, I'm trying to re stir up your, your memory. I don't have a big old spoon this morning, but stirring it up so that you will remember the danger that we're all stepping into by being happy and satisfied with what we have. And this, is, this will carry us over to a state where we're just happy with what I have and I don't need any more and I'm going to make it to heaven. Okay, these people, they, they didn't come, they, th they figured everything's going to work out okay and that's the way many times we are. Everything's going to, you know, fall into place, everything's going to be okay. And we don't wake up and realize. And especially when God shakes us, I'll ask you the question. You can turn it and focus it on them. I'll ask you the question. How many of you have ever been shaken by God to get up out of your lukewarmness? Okay, so I'm not talking about something that is estranged no. or different. It is something that the danger lies at the door. How many have, have been woke up more than once? Okay, some of you being really honest. And sometimes three times and sometimes four times because we're creatures of habit and we fall into ruts. And this is why this, this sin is so respectable. 
like we talked about last week. You look like a saint, you act like a saint, you praise God like a saint, you go through the motion, and I forget, I think it's Sister Rogers that says what you are in your house later on and what you are on your job, you really, 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 that's really showing who you are. But the thing is, is that everybody that sees you thinks you're a child of God, and yet inside you don't know. And many times, even on the house, in the house, and on the job, we are who we were supposed to be, but we know what we are inside. A lot of people don't like that. We know what we are in here. We know whether we have the joy. We know whether we have the longing. We know whether we are have the hunger. We we know where, whether we have the willingness to do what we're supposed to do. I have a question. Has God ever called you? This is a class. Has God ever called you? to help him or to do something in a specific manner. Let me see your hands. He's called you in particular to do something. Okay? I won't ask you to raise your hands. How many did not do it? I figured it would get done some other way. With smile, brother, too. <laughs> okay. That is what happens when these people, what these people did. They figured to get done some other way. God told them, or he demonstrated somehow that they needed to do their work. They needed to get into the battle. They needed to do their part. They didn't do it. They didn't come to the aid. And so God used another means. Don't worry. God will take care of this battle, and he will be the winner. But we're the losers in all of this. And what happened next? Okay, another question for you. Could the Lord do without Moroz? Yes, he can. Because he did. It took a woman. Man, like Brother Miguel said, these men should really have been ashamed to realize that a woman had enough uh, keenness and awareness that when this general comes into her tent area and asks for protection and to rest and whatever, she knew what she had to do for the Lord. And in her mind, that plan was fixed already. But if the others had done what they were supposed to, this would never have happened. A woman wouldn't have gotten the glory. But God will find the vessel. Now, <clears throat> as a saint of God, if God tells you he wants your help, or God shows you something that you can do that is within your ability, and you refuse to do it, and you don't carry it through, and God chooses someone else, how do we feel? We feel terrible. But if we're lukewarm, yeah, we feel it. We feel bad. But you say, oh, well, it got done anyway. Because we're satisfied. What we don't realize is that everything that God wants of us and for us to do for him is that we're laying treasures up in heaven. And sad to say some people are using, using the stories of the day or how people express it. When you get to those golden gates and St. And Peter's looking for your little house, you're not going to have it. Putting it down in everyday language. That's not how it is in heaven. Okay, Brother Richard. <laughs> but using it so we can grasp the point. Why? Because you said, oh, God will take care of it. Oh, it'll go on. And nobody, and we know this, Brother Alice has preached it, it's been in, in, our, in our, since we were little. I've heard it from many ministers. God has a church and the church is going to keep on going. God's going to use who he has to use. But I want to be one of the ones used. Because there's great joy in it. There's great pleasure. I don't want him to look on me and say, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth because you are lukewarm. And that's what happened when we're not busy for God and we're not seeking God's face. Okay, next question. Did the Lord sustain any loss in this battle? Was there any loss? Remembering the battle. Was there any loss, Sister Graham? The Lord didn't get any loss. But then as you studied it, there was no loss. They won the battle. They won the battle. Why? Because the Lord, the Lord is omnipresent. He can figure out a way around you every single time. So don't think you're so important. 
just feel honored that he has chosen you or ask for your help. You should feel honored and humbled that God would want to use you in a battle, use you to, to build something, to do something, to accomplish something. It should be an honor. But don't worry, God does not need you. God always has other ways and other means. But that scares me. Because if God doesn't need me, that's scary. Just think about it. I want him to need me. I thought about that uh, a couple of weeks, maybe about a month ago. I was sitting there and I was thinking about why is it we can have intimacy with God is because God wants to be with us. And I want God to want me because he knows that I'm going to give him something and not that I am just constantly needing him, needing him, and he said, oh, there she is again. Uh, many of us, well, some of us, well, let's put it this way, some people have children and they're always with their hands like this, but they never give of themselves. They never give anything. And this is the way many times I think that God looks at us. And so he sees, well, that's the way they are. They're in that lukewarm state and forget it. He wants us to want him and need him. But we must build it to such a way that God needs us, that he can count on us. Uh, he can count on me, he can count on me. There's a song we used to sing. He can count on me, he can count on me. And I, I, I like that song because I think that God should be able to count on me. Now I'll leave you a question this morning. Can he count on you? Or is it, we go back to the beginning of our lessons in lukewarmness, is it because we have family work and all these things above God and God's not first. If all these things are there first, God cannot count on you. Because he knows that if anything happens in these other things, you're going to take care of that first before you take care of him. And we need to get to the place in our lives where we can be counted on by God. And these people were not. So the Lord, oh, okay, I, you don't want to come to my head, aid? You don't want to help me? Fine. Just wait, just wait. After the battle's over, we read everything all about it. That they lost, God won. Then God comes along and says, okay, now you're gonna to have to give account. You are a cursed. Okay, uh, is it right for anyone to be cursed for doing nothing? Is it right? That question is very good, sister. Very clear. Is it right for anybody to be a curse for doing nothing? Well, Richard. It's like, the, it's like they said after the nonsense to, to see and do nothing. To, to stand and do nothing in the face of evil is evil in itself. And that you can't, you're to be indifferent. It's like watching somebody beat up a woman and not step in. Right. You, know, you might as well be beating up. But you're as guilty. To me, you're just as guilty. Yeah. Okay, so is it right for anyone to be cursed for doing nothing? Yes, it is right. And God above all people has the right. This brings me to this thought. If we're doing nothing for God and we're in a lukewarm state, do you think that humanly, human leadership will come and ask you to do anything? Not if they're spirit filled, they will not. And some of you have felt that from me before. <laughs> when you've gotten into that state and you weren't doing or you were lukewarm and we knew it, I didn't come and ask you to help me. I didn't come and ask you to be present to, to help. Valor's back there, yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Because we knew the state you were in. We can't count on you. Can't count on a lukewarm person. Did you get Luke one more on vacation? No. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. But God cannot count on Luke one. That's why he was so sick of it when he saw them. 
I'm just thinking that sometimes when we have people that we can count on, or we may think we can count on them, and we may ask them for something, you know, like you may ask somebody to help me in this, whatever, and if they don't, if they don't do it, next time you know that you can't go to them because you can't, you cannot count on them, and I feel that maybe could God could feel that way. And oh, I know he feels that way because he did. He showed he, us. If he that shows me to do something for, for his kingdom and I don't do it, then next time, why bother? <laughs> He's going to look for someone else that is willing, you know, to do whatever he he wants to put in, in, in their heart, you know, to do. And also, when we do it, okay, I got to do this because the Lord said so, and we do it in a sloppy manner. God is not going to accept that either because he really can't count on you. Because just just to throw out crumbs for God. I think that is so, I don't know how you feel, but it makes me feel sick. It makes me feel sort of an anger inside. How dare you just throw out anything and say you've done it for the Lord? I, I, I would prefer to say I'm not capable of doing it. Now I'll help whoever, but I'm not capable of doing a complete good job. But to say, okay, I'll do it, and you just throw out crumbs, and it's not well done, it's not complete, whatever. God doesn't like that either. You want to really want to do it, because I've learned that. You want to find a way. Well, if you really want to do it, and you want to do things for God, okay, God, and He tells you to do it, you feel like you don't have the capacity of doing it, but God will give you the capacity to do things. It's amazing. Uh, once again using people that have no more of an education than high school, that they can teach and that they can share the gospel, they can go deep in the gospel. And I've seen this all my life. They didn't have educations from higher learning, but yet God used them, why? Because they were willing to just dive head down and do what they had to do. Change what they had to change, fix what they had to fix, but to do the best they could for God. And then God honors that, okay. So yes, when we are asked to do it, we must do it or otherwise it is counted unto us as sin. Okay, who says so? Once again, the angel of the Lord is the one that is speaking here, not you. Yes, my brother. Oh, and he has. One thing on this song, Los Angeles was always here, man. I look back over it and I think about it and it, what Jesus said about this age. And he said that you, that you don't know. <laughs> but he said, you think, he said, you are rich. Yeah, we didn't get but that you, you're in that lukewarm stage. But you don't know. So he said, you don't know, for you said, I'm okay. And the pastor comes and says, uh, uh, brother, how are you doing? Oh, pastor, I'm doing okay. You know, but because the pastor find out that, you know, for who, who, God, who God went to use to wake you up? It's the word. The word. <laughs> Where it comes come. from, whether through you, through me, through yeah. a preacher, yeah, through it. reading. He said, brother, how you doing? I said, I'm okay. But he see deep down that you're not okay. Right. <laughs> so he come and try to stir you up to say, to find But you said you're okay. Yeah. But maybe he, he don't say, brother, if you're okay, I'm up here and I'm watching you. I can see you right now. Uh, I don't remember the last time you testified. Uh, I don't hear you. But he doesn't say anything to that. You know, he yeah. said, he just asked you how you're doing. But he said, you're okay. And that's where the, the danger The right? danger lies. You said, I'm okay. Why do you say that? Because we go back to what we said in the very beginning. You're going through the rituals of being a saint. Living, okay, I don't sin. I don't sin. I read, I pray, I come to service. I raise my hand. I may even stand and testify. But 
but I have somewhat against you because you are lukewarm. Welcome, 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 Chicago. <laughs> Good to see you, Brother Arnold and his wife. Um, but you say you are rich and you're poor. That's why I like brother, as old as you are, to say, it still scares me. And this is the way we have to live as God's people. When we are realizing we are in the last age, we are in the danger of every one of us being lukewarm. And as these people, morose in that verse tells us that the, the angel of the Lord came down and cursed them. Why? Simply because they did nothing. Now, if you think that you can get away with it, who do you think you are? Just tell me, who do you think you are? Wake up this morning to realize you're nobody special. God still won the battle. God still has a church. It may not be as big as it was, but God still has a people. And it will keep on going on until, if, 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 if I put it this way for my class, if God didn't have a people, we wouldn't be here at all. God still has the salt of the earth. I want to be counted as that. But the respect for sin, we're all in danger. Okay. Then it goes on to say, in verse 17, it is back in Revelation. I'm sorry. Got to go back to Revelation. To whom? To add to the... Didn't Paul say oh, that? Okay. Okay, it's okay. Didn't Paul say to know to do what is right and not do it? To know good and do it not is counted to your sin. So, okay, but he said, answer me now. He said, you think you're rich, but I know you're poor. So what do you do with that? Combine it two. Yeah, I'm not really. I'm mistaken. He's not really rich. I'm mistaken. He I'm says. mistaken because the thing is, I think that my thinking is that you know that we we being the church, we have the name Church of God. We come out of the great tribulation or the false religion. Now we find ourselves in this in a situation where we say we're justified, we're sanctified, we're in the truth. So basically, it's like. Where do we go from here? And we fail to realize that it's not just staying in that state, that God is endless, and there's so much that we can abound in, in, in God. And, but yet, we, we just become complacent and think, well, we've gotten where God wants us to be, and then, but there's so much more to be done, and so much more to gain from God, and um, so much more. There's so many needs. If not, we just wither away and, and die. Okay. I think that the scary part is in here in verse 17. Okay, that's where and we're going And I have in Spanish where it says, you know, sabe tu. Because thou sayest. Yeah, but go to the, the, that other part. You know, oh, and tu. have need of nothing and knowest okay. thou not. That's the scary part. Because the scary part is not knowing. Thinking that you're okay and not realizing that you are accursed. Okay. That's to me the scary part. That I would fall in such a state that I would not know. Because if you don't know, you can't fix it. That's why I asked the question and 95% raised their hand. How many of you have ever found yourself and been shaken by God in a lukewarm state? Okay? We have to be honest. And that's where it can, and in the description of the church, he said, I would that you would be either hot or cold, but you're lukewarm. I don't want you that way. I'm, I'm sick of you. I'm going to vomit. Okay. So he's telling us all of this, and God speaks to us. But the thing is, is that when God shakes and speaks many times, we just accept it as another of his, his movings, another one of his speakings, another one of his talking. But God gets personal. And when God gets personal, this is what I love about God. We really have to be cursed when we get down to verse 17. He started at the top with lukewarmness, where I can talk to you, I, you can realize it, I can shake you, I can move you. But then he gets down here, now you don't know, because you're deceived. What did I tell you about being deceived? Okay, being deceived, there is many times there's no hope. But there's very, there is hope, but there's very little hope when a person is deceived. And especially if they're deceiving themselves and deceived by God. 
Uh, I was thinking. He was awake. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about all that. Um, it's the mercy of God that one awaken from that condition. And God will do the extreme when he wants to show mercy on that person. Because like Sister Rose was saying, they don't know. And the only way to know is for God to shake them up. And I was thinking about uh, Jonah. You know, here's a, a man that um, knew God. And the only way God was going to wake him up was for him to realize the condition that he was in. But it wasn't until God called him to do something that he had to make a decision. And that exposed him. So as long as God didn't call him, he knew God. He knew the, the true God. And he was just posting along. And then God called him to do something. And then that exposed because he didn't want to do it. The God didn't curse him and as far as, you know, say, okay, I'll find somebody else. God says, no, you're going to do it. And he took him through, we know the story, what he had to take him through for him to realize, okay, I, I acknowledge my condition. And he did it. But go to the end of jail. Right. And you find out he still wasn't happy. He still, yeah. That there was still something in him that he still lacked. To me, he lasts back in his old state because you never heard anything about him as far as being a prophet going out. But the thing was, is Jonah did what he told. That's another warning. That we can be shook do what God wants us to do and fall right back into it. Because we are creatures of habit. Wake up class. Every day you get up, brush your teeth, go to the bathroom, put on your clothes, go out and eat your breakfast and then go to work or do what you got to do. You come back home, you eat your meal, you might go to church, you might do something else. You go to bed, you get up, you do it the next day, the next day. We're creatures of habit. What happens? We fall into routine. Number one, we're not awake enough and we're not sensitive enough to God's spirit. This is what God wanted. He wanted them to know him and see him because you said it. We have salvation, we have sanctification, we have the unity of God's church, we have a revelation of who he is. But yet people don't even know that. It's just a fact. We can't live that way. It's got to be part of us. So that when we know him so intimately, we can't fall into a lukewarm state because I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied with what I got. I want more. This is the way we have to live. I mean, when I first started saying that, y'all were like, well, I'm not. Because he has, you said, he abounds. Or, and we need to abound in the things of God. This keeps us out of a lukewarm state. But people don't like to do it, Sister Rodis. That's the problem. Honestly, between us and God, self-examination keeps us, and, and we have to be conscious of that and do that be, well, in our prayers with the Lord. Not only when we hear the messages, because we've seen that. Sometimes you hear the messages, and like you said, you say, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But you don't do anything about it. But if you're still conscious of it constantly, and you self-examine yourself before the Lord, I think that keeps you. Okay, if you're doing that, then you're not looking more. I'll go that far to say, because you're being honest, because you you know you're poor, and you have need of you Right, right. I'm sorry, brother. Back to you. I'm probably way past that point already. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yesterday two incidents happened that could relate to this, what we're talking about. Uh, yesterday I was uh, helping a sister move, and uh, I needed some extra help. And uh, I thought about a brother. Also, because he had, uh, you know, a pickup truck, and he was with, with some young people, so I called him up, and right away he says, "Okay." I go, the first thing I told him was, "Do you want to lay some treasures in heaven?" <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing I told him. Yeah, and, like, oh, and, yeah, and he said yes. And I said, "I got a sister needs us to help him move." And he goes, "Oh, we'll go over there right now." And that response, that quick response, was that's the kind of response that God wants to see from us when He needs us, you know, He could count on us. But at the same time, something else happened. While they were all moving, the young brothers, they were helping the sister. There was one of the young brothers that was there with his hand in his pocket while the others were working. And it kind of bothered me. And, and, and putting it to, you know, according to what we're talking about, that's how I see how God feels sometimes, you know. And he, and he was with his hand in his pocket. So I approached him. I said, brother, everybody's working. Come on, move. I don't have that confidence, because, you know, he's a young brother. And, uh, but he didn't take no responsibility he didn't, he didn't shake up he didn't move you know and it, and it, it kind of bothered me in the inside because he that and I said that's how God feels many times 
when he wants to use us and he kind of tries to tries to let us know, hey, you know, wake up, you know, we move, do with something. And we're with our head in our pockets, you know. Yeah, because God, God gives us opportunity. Mm -hmm. God has given every single one of you in here opportunities to do for Him, mm -hmm. to be on fire for Him, but it is up to you. God will not cram himself down anybody's throat. You have to hunger. If I could just relate how deep and how important it is to want more of his greatness so that when you go out, you radiate. You radiate Christ. You radiate him, his presence through your conduct, through your speech through your look, how you look through your eyes. I don't know about you, but I've, I've dealt with people that I don't want to, and I love eyeballing people. I just love it to see their reaction and see if they're, you can tell a lot about people, but, but Christians, there are a lot of Christians that go out and they, they won't even look at your face hardly when you're talking to them. What's wrong with you? you got Christ in you. You, you have nothing to hide. You, you, you want to shine. You want to be there. You want to glow for him. <laughs> And this keeps us out of lukewarmness. Not only are we studying the danger of being lukewarm, but we're also seeing that we, there's a way out by us putting certain things into effect. They gave me five minutes, five minutes ago. So on verse 17, <laughs> we're going to pick up next Sunday. We still have a lot to go, and then we get into the good one, Brother Richard. Hot or cold? And you can't wait for that one. <laughs> because you can be either. But there is the grave danger of each one of us being lukewarm. And we must all take our stand against it because that is the respectable sin of today. Real quick, the people that stand in Israel, yeah. do you think that, uh, that uh, there's, any place to, there's any reason to stand with Israel today? As a nation, yeah. no, but I do support them in, oh. in there in, in, because I, I just do. But uh, as far as supporting them in that way, no, because we are the new Israel. We are the new his chosen people because we are his people. But as far as the literal... As a country. As a country, yes. yes. But as a nation, like under God's uh, right. approval, no. Because they have been already rejected because they rejected him. Okay. Answer your question? Yeah. I don't want to go around the circle. I, just, it was just, it was I know it's just a passing thought. I know. I know where your mind goes. <laughs> okay, you're just missed. <laughs>